Hey everybody, it's finally Friday. You know what that means? That means I'm on Facebook answering your questions. And there are a lot of questions on there. So I tried to scroll back to like all the way till yesterday and make sure that I got through a lot of them. And I answered some of you on there. So if your question isn't in here, check your Facebook because I may have answered it anyways. So I have four questions. Got to get through this because I got to get to yoga so I can relax and meditate. Um, okay, question number one. Hi, Katie. I hope this gets to you. It did. I'm applying to college and I was wondering if most colleges have free therapists or support groups. I struggle from self-harm and I've had some unsuccessful experiences with therapists in the past and my parents have basically forgotten slash given up. I'm hoping to go to a college that can provide some kind of help. Do you know how I can find out if they have these services? And that's a great question. In the States, the answer most likely, I would say like 80% to 90% of the time is yes. All colleges will have a, um, <clears throat> what's it called? Ours is called the health center. And for many of you, um, it may be a little bit different, maybe like the health care center, um, the mental health center, but you can look on their website. I would go to their website and I would look across the tabs at the top, like might be say services or it might say amenities, depends on what kind of college you're going to. Um, but I guarantee if you, even if you can't find it, but you could search counselors or search mental health and you can find it. And I'm sure that they have it. And um, all the ones that I've ever come across are free. So, or like a $10 copay. So I hope that that helps, okay? Question number two, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just ate. <clears throat> so I'm a little coffee like, <clears throat> okay. When I'm in recovery and um, and I started to eat normally again, is it is it normal to feel that I'm not good enough to have an eating disorder because I'm eating and it feels like I don't have, um, that I don't know how to have one. Like I'm not doing it right. Is that normal? Yes, it's very normal because to be truthful, um, and the second portion of this question, she asks, how can I get over feeling the eating disorder is all my fault? Our eating disorder is a nasty negative voice. And once you accept the fact that eating disorder is such a negative voice, you can start realizing the different ways it tells you what to do. And it tells you what's going on and what it thinks and what you're doing wrong and what you're not doing appropriately and blah, blah, blah. So it sounds like your eating disorder voice because you're finally fighting it. It sounds like it's um, getting the best of you and it's kind of winning. So I would encourage you to download my free workbook on my website, katiemorton.com and do the task number one a little bit with the things that it's telling you. So every time it tells you one thing, write that thing down in the ED voice and then the healthy voice line be like, no, I had an eating disorder and I'm fighting it. I'm working on recovery and that's a good thing or whatever. And it takes some time. And even if you don't believe it, keep saying it because you will believe it sooner or later. Okay. Question number three, <clears throat> how should I do my meal plan at school if the foods are already prepped and mixed instead of being able to pick the exchanges out individually? My best advice on this is talk to your dietitian. Talk to your, um, whoever you're seeing if it's a dietitian or it's a, um, man, my mom blank, nutritionist. Um, tell them about the foods and plan and cater your meal plan towards the foods they have available. I used to do that with my clients all the time. We would work in conjunction with um, their school to some extent. I might even call or the dietitian might call and find out what kind of foods they're gonna have and we'll make it fit for you. So if you can make another appointment and just let her know that, hey, it's, been, it's really stressful and things don't quite fit, she can make it fit better for you. Or, and as you get better and better at it, you can go off a meal plan. And you can just know that you need a protein and you need a vegetable and you need a starch and all the things you can kind of put your meals together, okay? Final question, question number four. Whenever I go to my therapy sessions, I plan to just break down and cry and let it all out. Me too, I like that, it feels good, it's so cathartic. <clears throat> but I always freeze up when I get there. And I'd end up just smiling the whole time, pretending everything's fine. Any advice on how I can let my walls down? Sometimes I'll have my clients I had a journal topic that I told you all to do. I think it was like last week. I have my clients do this and bring it in. So you could do it on your own and bring it in and explain to her, you know, usually I wanna come and I just wanna talk about things and I wanna get it all out, but then I end up just pretending everything's okay. And then you end up leaving and being frustrated. I'll have my clients write what I don't wanna talk about and then you just keep writing. I don't wanna talk about that jerk that cut me out. I don't wanna talk about how my dad was so mean and blah, 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 and you just start writing. And you could do it a couple of times. If only a portion of it comes out the first time, you might get a little better the second time or the third time. Um, and just keep bringing it in. And I would encourage you to tell your therapist that you're doing it 
and either say you'd like her to read it, but I think it's best if you can read it out loud. And sometimes it helps to just read versus have to actually say it, um, you know, from your memory. It's easier just to read from the paper sometimes. So I hope that helps. And if any of you have tips about that, let us know. Share your insights, okay? Our journal topic today is when is a time, and this is because I get a lot of questions about body image, when is a time when you felt really good about yourself? Now, this doesn't have to be about your physical appearance. This can be, hey, I just totally killed that exam. It was amazing. I got 100%. Or I did really well in that presentation. Or I nailed my driver's test. Or I was really a great friend today and it felt really good. When was the last time that you felt really good about yourself? And think about, um, you know, was it because of something that you've done? Was it about who you're with or where you were? Sometimes that can influence us a lot. Why do you think you felt so good about yourself at that point in time? And what was it that you told yourself? Write those down and post them up around the house so you can be reminded. And is there something that you can do this week, each of us can do this week, to help us get there again? So start brainstorming. Ways that help, what makes you feel good about yourself? And then what can we do to make sure that keeps happening? Okay? Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. I'll see you on Monday with my regularly scheduled videos. And then on Tuesday, I'll be on Tumblr. So ask your questions. See you then. Bye!